Yo, what's good with everybody, man? I hope everybody's having a productive day, feeling blessed, and like I always say, it's one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. So, Trey, man, I got one more uh, Fresno County Bulldog. And I know some people were like, that's not Fresno County, whatnot. I don't know. I've never been to Fresno County. The person that gave it to me, as you can see, if it's not there, like, in f plain view, I mean, who else is going to get a hold of that kind of recording and footage? Somebody that was in the county jail. Somebody that's in the control booth that can watch the cameras. So I was provided that. That happened a long time ago anyway. So like I said, I can only go off what people tell me what they provide for me. And um, they were in Fresno County Jail. That's where they worked. And they had the footage and noticed that I like to elaborate on these certain kind of videos. And they provide them for me. So I provide them for you guys. I know a lot of you guys watch them and just for entertainment. Just to be like, man, I want to see some. I want to see someone get down, bro. And I do my best not to promote it as a, in such a way. Even though I do know a lot of people tune in only on that basis. And I respect that. I, I mean, it is what it is. It's the video. My message does reach across platforms. I'm gonna give you an idea of something that I'm gonna do. And I know many of you guys may not like to hear this, but uh, there's four projects that I wanna give, that I wanna do personally. And um, it's gonna it's gonna force me to take some time off of YouTube because I really need to script it out, write it, focus. And I'm actually paying production companies to put it together professionally. So it's gonna take me some time because one of them I don't know, man. I just feel like, you know, we could do, everybody does YouTube. We can do YouTube all day. But I, I'm hoping this one that I put together, one of them could be utilized to be shown like in juvenile systems the way I was shown. Because there was a video. Sorry that I'm dragging it on for the video. I know you guys came to watch the Bulldog video. But I watched this video. And uh, I was, where was that? I wasn't why, matter of fact. Gang, it was the gang coordinator. It was like the gang awareness before you parole. And I, they were showing us prison videos. None of them had anything to do with prison removals, but it showed like gangs, how they started, prisons they're at, what inmates look like, and the cell living. And all that did was inspire me to be in jail. All it did was inspire me, like, man, I want to be like that homie I seen with the big old north there across his chest with the song on his stomach, how he was all yoked up with a shank looking around. That, all that documentary did was motivate me. It didn't open up my eyes to nothing. It just told me, like, man, with some powerful stuff going on in prison that I want to be a part of. So one of the documentaries that I want to do, I want to change that narrative. That's kind of why I've been doing a lot of videos, two videos a day, because I'm saving all the money that I can to pay for the production. Because I really want to put that video together. That'd be an awesome video to do. And I already talked to them, and they're very, very pricey. So I was like, hey, if, I, if this is something I want to do, then I just got to work hard at it, do something like this, make a lot of videos put out as much as content as possible and uh, stack it up and invest in these these, these videos because I would like to, you know, introduce that video to, you know, juvenile systems or, you know, class uh, gang classification so they can introduce it to, you know, whatever facilities they work at. It'd be awesome to create a video like that. So that's my goal. I don't know when it's going to happen. I don't know when I'm going to take the break. That way I can just sit there and focus because I have a lot of stuff that I can't post on YouTube, stuff that people sent me. And uh, like removal pictures, I have my removal pictures. I have pictures of people that I stab, ride videos, all kinds of stuff, man, that I can't post on YouTube. And I try my best. I share them with people. But then I thought about it. I was like, I don't want to do a book. I want to do a documentary. And I want to create one of the best documentaries ever. But in order to do that, I really need some time. So we'll see. I'm not saying it's going to happen yet. But let's get into the video of the Bulldogs. Now, as you seen with the thumbnail, dude. I'm not lying when I say 25 deep. Okay, I didn't count all the damn heads, but I'm, look, there was a lot of them, bro. There was more than 10, I can tell you that right now. So they're surrounded. As you can see right here across the screen, they're surrounding this dude, giving him his verbal lashing, telling him, you know, hey, bro, you're either going to give it up or we're going to take it. And they just start mauling him for no reason. I'm pretty sure there was a reason, but they just, why you got to jump somebody that deep? Like, what? how much damage can you really do? jumping somebody that deep i mean they, if they had enough time like 10 minutes and people started pulling back and there was like five people socking them kicking them you're gonna feel it to an extent but you're not gonna get a full impact of 
giving somebody a beat down with that many people stumbling across each other because everybody's trying to get a punch in. And I'm pretty sure half them dudes that didn't even punch him are going to go back to the cell like, man, I socked him in the ear, bro. It's all swollen. I hit him in the back of the head and snot flew out of his nostrils. I'm pretty sure somebody said that because I used to see that a lot. When I got in some riots, dude, I was involved in the riots. The paperwork has my name, involved in the riots. And there'd be people in the yard like, yeah, I was in it. And I'm like, first of all, no, you weren't. You know, your name's not on the paperwork. But I didn't get caught. Second of all, I was there for all of it. I didn't see you at all. And I was fighting multiple people. You weren't even close to the vicinity. But I'll let you lie to and tell your story. And, you know, write your baby mama a letter and say, hey, man, man, I'm, today, man, I socked out this dude, bro. And I didn't even get, I didn't even get caught, babe. Hell yeah, for I'm still a thug. Bro, you asking why still? You know, I'm still a thug, though, man, baby. You know what I mean? So when I get out there, I'm going to protect you. Well, like, run with your lies, bro. Run with your lies. But they jump the dude 25 deep or 20 deep. You know who does that a lot? The two fibers. Dude. I would swear, bro, every time we would go be on the yard chilling, we'd be eating sodas, chips, ice creams, busting a unity spread for the riders, and then the, here comes 20 of them walking our direction. Like, first of all, it only takes one of you to come like, hey, fool, we're going we're gonna to lay the yard down right now. Yeah, I just, can, can you stay? We're going we're gonna to knock them down over here. Can you stay over here real quick so none of your people get hurt? They'd be pulling up to the table 20 deep. But what's up, fools? And then we just all looking at them like, man, what's going on, man? What is all this, bro? What's up with this whole mariachi band popping off, bro? What's going on? You going to sing us like a, a corrido or what? And they'll be like, hey, fool, it's going to go down right now. Fool, we're going to lay the yard down right now. Okay, then go do it. You, you ain't got to ask us. You ain't got to tell us. But we, we really don't care, bro. Because you guys do it all the time anyways. As long as we get our canteen, that's fine. But they jumped somebody one time. And I want to say they jumped them 10 deep. 10 deep. They jumped them on the handball court. Honestly, you know what it looked like? It looked like, like a football huddle. Like they were in one big circle and they were just moving slowly like this. Like if they were just giving each other cadences and like, oh, we're going to do this. It's game time. Well, that's what it looked like. You couldn't tell nobody was punching them. And there was people trying to like, like jumping back and forth, skipping, trying to get in between bodies. I don't, I don't even think they landed a punch. So the dude's getting jumped 20, 10 deep, should I say. So the dude's getting jumped 10 deep. And then they, they shoot. They throw like three bombs. Everybody separates. And all you hear is two, five, whoop, whoop, and I lay it down. Dude, the dude literally got up and walked away from the bombs towards the left, towards the canteen wall, and was just looking back, just smiling. And these fools, like, swore they did something. Like, they did irreparable damage. And that's one thing that we made fun of that day. We are like, damn, fool, 10 of you fools on this. First of all, they were all the same size, and the dude they jumped was the same size as the rest of the guys. So it looked like, you know, one big old midget bro. And the dude walked off laughing. So I remember we were laying down and I was, uh, I was talking to the homie Cisco and the homie Boogie. Boogie's a Latin king slash rider from New York. Got to tell you his story one day. And sure enough, man, like he was just laughing. I'm looking at the homie like, damn, fool, if you, if your victim get up laughing at you, bro. That's embarrassing, bro. I hope that don't ever happen to us. And during my time, it never happened to us. I'm not saying it didn't happen to anybody else, but during my time, it didn't happen. That fool left the yard without a scratch on him. So I never really got the concept of jumping somebody 10, 20 deep. But, you know, no rules. There ain't no rules in fighting. That's what people used to tell me, too, in prison. I used to be like, hey, there is rules, bro. Like, you a sucker, bro, if you hit me in my, my, my nas, bro, in my, in my sack. Ain't no rules, fool. Ain't no rules. I'll squeeze them, bro. I'll bite them if I have to. And I hated that stuff because there was people in jail that did that. They fight their cellies. I'm like, yeah, man, I punched them in the D. Hell yeah, bro. Ain't no rules, bro. I squeezed them, I, I choked them, I bit him on his arm. My cellie got his finger bit off in a fight. And I was like, and I said the same thing. I was like, bro, that's suck of stuff, man. Like, man, fight, man. Like, to me, a fight is like head up from the shoulders. You don't meet me with the shoulders. If you whoop me, you whoop me. I'm fine with that. Even though somebody's going to jump in for me, which is pretty stupid, but it happens. You know, that's what I think. Just, hey, if I can knock you out, I can knock you out. If you can knock me out, none of that extracurricular stuff. This ain't, but you want to want something that's funny? You know how many people grow their hair out on the SNYs and get into a fight? And there ain't no rules. They'll pull your hair on the SNY. And I should be like, I could never do that. And I would hear rumors like, why not, bro? We want to grow his hair out, bro. Shh, and grab a hold of it. Just throw him around. Every time I yank his head back, bro, he can't fight. He's too busy worried about his hair. I'm like, nah, to me, there's rules in fighting. Just meet me with the shoulders. Punch, punch, punch. You want to kick? Kick. You kick me in the, in the nads, that's 
that's a low blow, bro. That's a point. You know, they're going to card you for that. But they jump. They, but the main thing on the SNY is, bro, is you're going to get jumped a lot. And I know Bulldogs, however they program, they don't have no rules. They do what they want. They're going to jump whoever they want. But you're not really doing nothing to a victim. That's why when it came to the Northern Riders, we always sent two people, depending on the size of the victim. And we'll send two with one at standby. And he's just a standby. He doesn't jump in unless a homie gets dropped or they can't get him off his feet or he makes a decision like, hey, bro, this ain't going too well, man. That fool's like handling this business. And it happens. Sometimes you underestimate your victims and you don't know that the dude had beaters. Or you might know he has beaters, but you're like, man, me and the homie got it because we had beaters. Just because you win like five fights doesn't mean you can fight. Like you can still get dropped by somebody. All it takes, like me, my weakness is my nose. To be honest with you, I'll just be honest with you. I ain't got to hide nothing. You hit me in my nose for some reason, my whole front face just inflates, like way out here. I start looking like a Ethiopian, or a, I start looking like Caesar off Planet of the Apes. I'm all swollen to the front, and then my eyes get watery, and then I can't see because I got a lazy eye. My left eye is my lazy eye. That's why I wear glasses off camera, but. So if you hit me right there, I'm I'm not I'm no good at all. I'm gonna be too busy like I'm gonna be too busy like that. So I never understood why. Like I get it, it's stupid. We're gonna jump somebody three on one. It's a coward move. I've seen a lot of people in my comment sections all over TikTok say jumping somebody is a coward move. It really is. You know, maybe it'd be a cool. Maybe things would be different. It, okay, you want this four off the yard? You want to you want to remove him for whatever reason? Fight him one-on-one. -on -one. He, he wins, he stays. You win, he goes. It'd be cool like that. It'd resolve a lot more issues and with a lot less violence and a lot less, you know, DA referrals. But, you know, the concept of jumping somebody is because you don't want to lose. Now, I don't know why the dudes in Fresno County Jail jumped him, why they decided to beat him up so bad, 20 deep. But more, more likely, they just did it because... Everybody was just bored. Everybody wanted a bore story. Everybody wanted to get involved. You know, that's something people just get involved in when they ain't got nothing else to do. You know, idle hands is, is a terrible thing. And boredom will make you do the most stupidest things while you're incarcerated. Believe me when I tell you that. But imagine that. If that was the concept. Hey, you want this fool gone? Then you got to do it. But if he wins, he stays. But if you and if you lose, shut your mouth. Let it be. Let it go. It's a dead issue. Because I never seen this with the Norteño program, but I seen it back in the day with Sureños. Two Sureños got a problem, and they really needed to hash it out. And the Meseros couldn't do nothing about it. Okay, go out to yard, and you go out to yard. Both y'all with bangers. See who wins. But you guys are gonna go clean up after this, and you guys are gonna get fined after this. But go ahead, figure it out. Do what you guys gotta do. Since you guys can't seem to let it go. Imagine that. Because I've seen one-on-ones on the, on the yard with the blacks and the whites and the sureños. Norteños don't allow it. Even on the streets when you get deemed no good or you get dropped from your hood, they still jump you. You know, I'm not, if you really think about it, like where did the concept of jumping come from? Like whatever happened to the good old-fashioned one-on-ones? Because I got a lot of one-on-ones under my belt when I was a kid in my hood. I got scraped a lot, but I still fought. My YAs were one-on-ones. The rights were the only thing that we were jumping people. But when we go to jail, everybody's jumping everybody. Like, there's, there, you rarely ever see a one-on-one -on -one fight. When you do, like I said, most of the time it's with the blacks because their politics are different. So it's cool to see. I mean, I hate to say it like that, but it's cool to see a one-on-one -on -one once in a while. None of that blades and knives chasing everybody. Like, you see grown men hashing it out. Best man wins. Pride and respect. And shake hands. They didn't even have to shake hands. They just come back like, hey, man, I lost, so what? But me and that fool dealt with it. The old school days are done and over with. That's why I'm a big fan of uh, street brawls and ghetto brawls on YouTube. They even have uh, Bakersfield backyard brawls. I watch them a lot. That's one of the things I wanted to do. I always told myself if ever, you know, YouTube just runs out for me, that I wanted to go uh, just start training and just do regular little backyard fights, you know, professional backyard fights, maybe go to the casinos and, you know, like, like in, 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 in Limore in Kings County, they got grudge matches. And I guess you can go fight in the casino, $500 if you lose, a thousand bucks if you win. I don't know if they do it no more. But when I heard about that, I was like, I, mean, I don't get my butt whooped for $500 in one night. I ain't tripping. Whoop me, bro. I just want to fight. It's just a good old fashioned brawl with two grown men 
with respects, just hashing it out, duking it out. But like I said, those days are over. Now, you get getting jumped 20 deep. So with that being said, like I always say, it's one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. Peace.